Bible. That was Europe and Final Countdown on 90.7 of the Music FM. I'm sorry for the technical difficulties earlier, but we are on the air now. Me, it's me, J. Red, and my brother James. Now let's start with the Bills. Well, the order, the transition is complete. Terry and Kim Pabu are officially the new owners. But the results of the field have not changed. They go face the arch rival New England Patriots and they lose 37 to 22. What, James? What are your thoughts on the game? Um, highly frustrating. Oh yes. It's but no, no, you, you can go. It's a part of a frustrating weekend. If we had some sports, but we'll talk about the Amherst frustrating loss later. But between the bad refereeing, the bad defensive backs. Tom Brady eating off the Patriots be- D-line get- back again. Everyone was saying, oh, the Patriots have fallen apart. The Bills' defense is better than ever. Th- th- this was a Pagula taking over, so this was supposed to be different. But, well, you just saw the same old, same old for the last 14 years. But, no kidding. I, I know. It's one of the most frustrating games I've seen in a while. Um, and... This is more of a personal thing than anything else, but um, you know how they always cut the scene with people around the city, and they cut to a scene, if it wasn't the scene in particular, it's beautiful palace in Butler, which is called Chestnut Ridge, it's the Tavarium on now, and the hill overlooking the city, you can see the entire city from Orchard Powell, and it's, and it's thinking to myself, they're just showing me all the places that I would rather be right now than watching this football team. And that was one of the most frustrating things I've seen in a while. Um, our defense couldn't stop anyone in the second half. Literally, plus four possessions were a touchdown, a field goal, and then two touchdowns. This is supposed to be the strength of our team, people. Um, the penalties were awful. The weapon was worse, but the penalties were still awful. Yeah, uh, by the way, we're going to go and beat Tom Brady. Yeah, he's going to have to do better than three turnovers and no takeaways. he got to do a little bit better than that. Um, altogether, it was a highly frustrating game. I know. Like I said, the defense, I think our defense, my opinion, our defensive line is very good, but I think our defensive backs have been exposed. And you gotta question some of the trades. I mean, you're tired about like how we trade away stuff, the, or, for how the TV doesn't trade in. Oh yeah, I was talking about this with John earlier. So we have, so one of the things uh, you probably noticed if you watch the game is that we have this brand new wide receiver, Sammy Watkins. He's pretty good. Not to deny that he's not good. Um, we traded a first round pick, our 2015 first round pick, to move up. What was it, three spots, or four spots, something like that? Uh, about four spots, yeah, we were number three overall. We have traded Cleveland. Right, you traded Cleveland for four spots, and we basically didn't use him at all. We put him out on, he was basically a uh, diversion, he was basically a distraction, but unfortunately he distracted only one person, and that's Darrell Levis, who's one of the best safety, best cornerbacks of our age. So basically, they, they put Revis on uh, Watkins. They didn't bother going to Watkins. And they took out, just like that, they took out one of the best weapons. And, you know, it got me thinking. Um, we had a guy once who was actually really good against uh, Joel Revis. His name was T.B. Johnson. We traded him over the summer because we had Watkins and we had this new guy named Mike Williams. Well, we didn't do anything with... Sammy Watkins today, even though we traded a first round pick to get him. And the Mike Williams guy we got, he was a healthy scratch. The only wide receiver who really had a good game for the Buffalo Bills was um, Scott Chandler. Uh, all the rest of them, I mean, Woods had a couple good plays, and, but other than that, they were pretty quiet. This, the reason why this was this, this small, it, it, it might not, considering our history, you uh, know our history of tight ends is probably right now. Uh, this was the first time to beat Metzlau in 1992 that we had a tight end with more than 100 yards catching. Wow. I mean, it was, it was an okay day for Orton. He wasn't really good. He wasn't really bad. But when you're competing against one of the best of all time in Tom Brady, you need to be better. Right. And I, I'm 
putting at least some of this on our defense. And I don't know, there was a couple of plays that Tom Brady just, you know, he's Tom Brady, he, he protects the ball really well. Um, but still, if you're going to be an elite defense, you need to, first off, you need to stop Tom Brady in the second half. With, with all due respect to what he did in the first half, you need to stop him in the second half. And second off, you need to create a turnover or two. And the Bills got exactly zero turnovers um, from Patriots. There was a couple of well, fumbles, or looked like fumbles, and however, the referee kept on rolling them down by contact. So. I, I think I think this um, game, and the other thing I hate about this game, it just underlines how stupid and how overly litigated this league is. It drives me nuts. And I, I think part of it was, you know, the crowd was a lot of false starts, but Nobody knows the rules of football anymore. It's so overly litigated to, to create this perfect ideal outcome. Um, and I'll, I'll give you a good example. The uh, Sammy Watkins illegal contact penalty. He cuts across the field, throws a block on a defensive back, set open, who's up wood for a... Um, He's up wood for a nice little cane, which obviously was called back because Hawkins blocked the guy. Now, this play happens all the time. All the time. He, uh, left, let it go, left, 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 let it go because, you know, it's not that bad. Um, but it's, a, it's practically illegal. So they actually called it for once on Watkins. My question is, why? I, I don't get why they make that a penalty. It's not it's not impending the offense. It's not giving somebody an unfair advantage. Um, it, 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 it's a block. It's a block in space. You know, is it, is it a perfect, you know, Offensive linemen throw their hands up, put them along the shoulders, and block like that? Probably not. Uh, but it's not a dangerous play. It's not a cheap play. It's a block. There's a lot of things that frustrate me in the NFL, like the officiating. I mean, well, the officiating pretty much stinks in all sports. I said, we'll talk about the Amherst game later. That's another thing that has been officiating, but it's just these routes, they're. I don't know how to describe it. Just, yeah, it's just. I think there's just too many rules in football right now. Um, they're, they're too. They're trying to control the game way too much through the refs, and they just need to let these guys play. And I, I, I know I could come just come back and bite me in the butt because I've often wondered if the NHL shouldn't use a rule book a little bit to open the game up and make it a little bit more exciting. So, yeah, you know, you can kind of go both ways with this. But I think where the NFL is right now, it's just a little ridiculous. Uh, Especially with the pass interference. Oh, yeah, that was some pass interference that took up the Bills out of, um, out of field goal range. I mean, this game should have been a lot closer than it actually was. But, I mean, I'm not playing. The Bills defense shouldn't be a lot off the hook. They did lose the game, but the referees just screwed the Bills royally. And, you know... My, my main thing about the, the refs is it's not so much that they cost the Bills the game, because they really probably didn't. Uh, we didn't deserve to win that game, and we didn't win the game. Uh, but people who watch the game need to understand what they are watching. The game needs to make sense, and if it doesn't, it's it's as much as a threat, I think, to the NFL is the domestic violence, is the red Washington Redskins. I think people need to understand the game and not get frustrated because the ref calls make no sense. And especially in football, when you have the refs in these, you have these replays, opportunity for replays all the time, and you have these refs standing in the middle of the field with a microphone trying to explain it, it only makes the problem worse. I mean, at least with hockey, you can go along and there might be some inconsistencies. But 
the game moves so quickly that it's not hard for people to notice all the inconsistencies, I think. Especially if you're more of a casual fan. But football has to get this right. They have to do better. I mean, they have nothing to worry about now because they are the number one most watched sport in all American television, but I, I definitely agree with you. I mean, we've got, there's a lot of issues the NFL has to face, and even though they have a big empire, they could lose it all if they don't get these things correct. <laughs> let's let's somewhat change the guard a bit. Let's talk about Terry Pagula and Kim Pagula. They now own the team, and it sounds like Pagula is a diehard fan, and they did, and a lot of those fans want to make some changes because obviously it's been 14 years since we maybe made the playoffs. Management just keeps on screwing up, and Pagula did make some changes. Jeff Whitman, the treasurer, gone. Russ Brandon is no longer in charge of the football department, and um, out of, and um, now back to like what Ted Black's role is. Do you think the Bills made enough changes? Too much? Too little? What do you think? Um, I think it's a good start. Um, I'm beginning to, you know, it, it's it's tough. It's, it's tough to see the change to the football team. Those those changes to make to the football program immediately. I would love to see, frankly. Um, and this is nothing else to go into. I, I would love to see um, I'd love to see Malone and Hackett finally bring in um, the guy from Baylor. Uh, Rondo is his name? It's Eric Bryles. Out Bryles, who's he's running a uh, little up pace up tempo offense in Baylor, kind of what kind of similar at least, at least in terms of you know, reputation to what Chip Kelly was doing in Oregon a couple of years ago, and obviously that's working out well for the Eagles. Um, but that's probably not going to happen until the end of the year at the most. You know, we need a, we, we need a franchise quarterback. Orton's okay, but I'm not exactly in love with the guy. We need a franchise quarterback. Um, E.J. Manuel's not the answer. I can tell you that if that's a Houston name. Right. I mean, maybe, maybe we could find a guy in the second round if we, you know, I, I don't know, but I don't want to force the issue either. Um, I was kind of torn on the Watkins trade. I mean, a lot of people don't like the move because they got a first round pick, but it's not like the Sabres who are tanking and going for a number one pick. The Bills, I mean, they have, the, they have their issues. They're not in the same league as the Patriots, the Chargers, but arguably this is probably the most talented team they've had in quite some time. Yeah, I think it is, but we still don't have a quarterback. Right. Um, our, our, our secondary is, I don't think it's bad if it's healthy, but uh, our secondary has got some flat holes. Our linebackers our, need, need a little bit of work. We're definitely better in a lot of places. Our wide receivers are better. Our line is really good. So, so we have we have some we have some good we, we're not entirely bad, but um, I just wish they would have waited until they were sure that EJ Manuel was the guy before they traded away a first round pick. Um, oh, there's some other press issues with the team. The running back, I mean, Fred Jackson was good. Um, Bryce, um, who's Bryce Brown? Is it? Uh, Booby Dixon. Yeah. Booby Dixon, see that right? Then you have CJ Spiller. Well, he had that one year. He was really good, 2012. And he's regressing. I can't explain it, but he's regressing. I think in 2012, and people talk about this a lot, he ran out of Buddy Nix's right offense, which was really innovative and really cool. And I wouldn't mind going back to it, but, but, we, but it was a specific, specific formula, a specific um, style, specific tactics, and he was well in that scheme. Uh, he's not more well in any other scheme that I've seen him working. I mean, people want to say, well, they need to find a, we need to find a way, to, Doug Moore needs to find a way to get CJ Spiller involved. Well, you know, um, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't all that good before Buddy Mix got here, you know, um, under Duran. And now, granted, neither was probably now similar in a lot of ways, but still, I mean, how can you be? How can you call yourself a great player if you need a very specific offensive scheme for you to be, you know, productive and valuable? Um, it's it's extremely frustrating, and um, you might, you know, I I can listen to somebody and say that you need a new and innovative offense for the 21st century, and that Brown and you know Brian and people are too old school. But don't tell me, you know, you got to change the offense to make C.J. Spiller work. 
Well, if the speed of Explode was half the play of people think he is, he'd be, you know, working. Oh, yeah. I, he definitely... I think the Bills should... I agree with that, but I think also good that the Bills should really trade G.J. Spill to someone who fits that role and get something back, like maybe like a draft pick to try to find the next quarterback. That would be nice, too. I would definitely support that. They should, they should do that. That, um, that move will definitely change the culture of the franchise. I mean, the crew came here, but I'm not sure if the, quote, culture has changed. Yeah, that's going to take some time. You know what we need for a culture? We need a decent quarterback. I mean, I want too much... Well, he's been surprisingly, you know, solid. He said he was 299 yards last today, 300 yards last week. I mean, you can't expect much more, but he's not a franchise quarterback. Um, you know, he, he had a couple of line to he had a couple of 300 yard games. Um, it's, it's it's unbelievable. I mean, it's frustrating because I'm, with the Bills, I am in the eternal. I'm a seemingly an eternal, eternal pessimist. With the Packers teams, I'm an eternal optimist. So, you know. I was talking with my friend with Dan, and he was saying, um, by the time we get a new quarterback and de- see him develop, um, we're not going to keep be able to keep around most of this team. And I, I, I told him like, well, Dan, if Sammy, if Pagula has the money, he's not going to let Sammy Watkins walk. And then Dan's like, yeah, but we'll, he'll. That doesn't mean he won't want to leave. So what do you think? Yeah, I think what found there is probably more age. I mean, Kyle Williams has been in the league for, what, eight years? Oh, yeah. Something like that. Mario Williams has been in the league for a while. Um, Spikes is here on a one-year contract. Um, with, you know, Jackson will be done. Um, Jack Spice, Jackson's not done already. So, and then, you know, and then there's obviously always a list of people walking. I think with the Google is about money a lot, I think it could help prevent people from walking. But that doesn't mean that people aren't going to get older and, you know, fines aren't going to be passed and people are going to be in place. I, I, think, I think what the Bills should do is they're going to try to win now, try to win as soon as possible. But, um... And I think it'll be like the Sabres. If they can't get a winner in like two to three years and they start letting those guys go, maybe they should do the Sabres. The Sabres should just gut the team, tank, and then just go all out. We'll try to build a winner that way. You know, I've been thinking about that, and I, I know Shope is a big fan of what Jacksonville's doing, which is basically the whole strip the team and tank and rebuild that way. But I don't know if that would work as well in the NFL. I mean, I don't think when you look at the top picks in the NFL drafts, they are consistently as good as the top picks in the NHL. And in, in hockey, you got a team of what? Well, you got on, on the field, you got on, on, on the field. On the ice, six players on the ice, five, three, four, two defensemen and goalie. Right. And then you have, um, you know, about. 18 skaters on a team, on a, on a team at a game at a time. With football, you're looking at you know significantly more people. Now, yeah, you, you have 22 starters, um, and then you have the special teams. You have backup players. You have specialists. Um, I think it'd be a lot more difficult to build a team to a whole full-scale strip down than it would be, you know, um, and also people don't, tra- you know, the idea of trading or trading away ass players for drafting. Nobody in the NFL does that. So, this would be a dramatically different thing, I think, of full-scale rebuild in the NFL than in the NHL, which is Probably the reason I'm not optimistic about the future. I, I understand. I mean, it's really a shame because the rule buys the team, he secures the future, and finds himself in a bad situation. Although, my advice, I think what he should do, um, he should do like what Denver did. I mean, Denver a couple of years ago kind of reminded me of the Buffalo Bills. They had a 4-12 record, then they went 8-8, eight eight. looked like they were coming together, then they got rid of Tim Tebow, who is not a really good quarterback. And they brought in Peyton Manning, and they got to the Super Bowl. 
So part of me is thinking maybe they can do something like that. Yeah, I'm thinking about that, and I mean, but just kind of how to, you know, kind of how, just kind of like, generally caught lightning in a bottle with that one. Um, I mean, maybe we could go get cousins out of, what, not cousins, or out of D.C., out of Washington, but I don't know what we would have that we would be able to get, that we'd be able to say to Washington, hey, we got this package, please give us one of your quarterbacks. We don't have a force next to you, which is, you know, part of the problem. But if we had a force, we could go out to Washington and say, hey, you know, we'll, we'll take our G3 off your hands. You can play as cousins. Uh, here we have a couple of force and let's go. But um, I don't think that's going to work. All right, the camera reminds me of the Islanders. Um, now we'll wrap up our football segment. We're going to go back into the music, then we'll talk about hockey. So, come on next, the Scorpions, Rocky Light, the Hurricanes, Hurricane 2000, I should say. Keep up the 9.7, the music.